Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. I welcome you to today's video where we take a look into a heated controversy involving Vice President Kamala Harris and her recent response to pro-Palestinian protesters at a rally. Now in a clip that has sparked widespread discussion, Harris's reaction to calls for an arms embargo on Israel is raising eyebrows. Now in this video, we'll hear from a Pam Kalayan commenter who has criticized her apparent lack of empathy and suggests that her demeanor reflects a deeper frustration with the protesters' demands. Now, he argues that many voters, particularly those within Michigan's large Arab community, are deeply unsettled by her stance. As the situation folds, we will explore various perspectives on Harris's response and what it means for her political future. So stay tuned as we break down the implications of this contentious moment and hear from others as well, weighing in on this significant issue. Don't forget to subscribe because you will find my videos interesting and intriguing. Give this video a thumbs up by tapping on the like button. Don't forget to be part of the conversation by sharing your thoughts on what you think about this video so with that said let's get into the videos i will be right back and when i do i share more on this this is disgusting watch how kamala harris reacted to pro-palestinian protesters at her rally yesterday you know what if you want donald trump to win then say that otherwise i'm speaking Look at the expression on her face, not a single drop of empathy. And this rally was held in Michigan, the state with the largest Arab population in the United States. And she could even pretend to care about Palestine. This is a face that says, I'm annoyed that you guys exist because you make my job harder. There's a lot of Americans who don't wanna vote for a genocide supporter. A lot of Democrats who won't vote for Kamala unless she puts an arms embargo on Israel, which is what those protesters were there for, to ask her, to put an arms embargo on Israel. You can tell that she hates that she has to pretend that she cares about Palestinians. Not even two days ago, security footage from inside one of Israel's detainment camps for Palestinians was leaked online, showing a group of IDF soldiers ganging one of the Palestinians they had detained in there. It's disgusting. What is this reaction? You know, Kamala was trying to have her own little girl boss moment here like she loves having, but all this moment did was show that she's a stone cold Zion. Said it before, I'm saying it again, no ceasefire, no arms embargo on Israel, no vote for Kamala. Help people see this video, repost, copy the link. If you wanna help Palestinians, you can go to my bio. There's tons of links in there for you to help. Thank you and free Palestine. Thousands of you attacked me online because I said we shouldn't vote for Kamala Harris and we should be demanding more and not the bare minimum for these from these politicians. And look what she's saying. Look what she's doing. Donald Trump intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis and he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. The only thing Kamala Harris is good at is saying words that relate to us in order to get our popular vote. The ceasefire Kamala Harris is speaking of is not the ceasefire we're speaking of. We want a ceasefire accompanied with reparations, payments, and rebuildment of Gaza and the full land back, back to the people. But the ceasefire Kamala Harris is talking about is we're gonna pause the ceasefire for quite a bit. That's the ceasefire she's talking about. She is married to a Zio. She does not care about what we think and what we want and our freedom as well here in America. And Tim Watts is also a Zionist. But he's saying key terms that we're saying, so people are gonna ride that train as well. We need to be asking more from our politicians. We cannot settle for less, okay? A lot of people are saying, we're not gonna vote for Trump because of Project 2025. But a lot of you don't realize, a lot of people currently live under what Project 2025 stands for. And I'm not saying vote for Trump or for, vote for Kamala. No, none of them matter. This, this election doesn't matter because there's always a list of agenda that gets checked off whether who gets gets voted in or not. What we should really care is increasing pressure into these politicians and demanding more. Right now, a lot of you are gonna be voting for Kamala and publicly showing that you're gonna vote for her. So she's not gonna do more. She's not gonna be working more for you. But, but if you show you're not gonna vote for her, even if you vote for her, if you're gonna show that you're not gonna vote for her until she meets your demand, she will work tirelessly because the power is within our hands. We give them power when we vote for them, when we rally for them, 
when we scream for them. But most of you have settled for less. Most of you are settling for less. I know most of you are gonna vote for her no matter what I say on here, but the least that you can do is demand more and not settle for less. Because bare minimum is not even something they, they are giving us. All they're saying is the key terms that we are saying, the, but the, the words that they say does not match what we're demanding. And it should match what we are demanding. It should match what we're demanding. Do not settle for less and demand and increase pressure on these politicians if you're gonna vote them, for them, at least. Let me say this real fast out loud. I do not have to support Kamala simply because she is black. I am not rooting for all black people. I, for the life of me, can't even fathom the fact that for the past couple of months, people have been free full of steam. Wearing your kufayas, wearing your t-shirt, your merch, going to these marches. But in the same breath, throw your full support to a woman who has vocalized and is a pivotal part of an administration who is actively massacring these people. A person who has yet to even formulate a platform. Y'all ain't even get no talking points, no sales pitch, no nothing of like, what it is that she's intending to offer. And then I see the post that like, oh, contrarian views are not intelligent. Well, at least somebody's thinking alternatively. Somebody's actually questioning. Someone is asking on the tail end of this, what do we actually get? But folks are fixated on the fact that she's black and got a silk press? That's what your livelihood is worth? Y'all didn't even think to think of third party candidates as an option? The way Kamala Harris handled those protesters at the rally last night was so awful. The way that she doubled down on being in charge instead of just acknowledging the protesters being like, I see you, I hear you. You know, what's been happening in Palestine is atrocious and I'm working towards a ceasefire and then let the crowd applause and then you move on. Like, it pisses me off because she clearly just doesn't know how to work a goddamn crowd. It's like almost uh, makes me wish that Tim Walz was running as president and not her. And I heard that Kamala's team is actively paying attention to the response they get from people off of Twitter. So I went over there to comment on her page and oh my God, I read Twitter comments for the first time in my life. Oh, oh my God, it's bad over there. I don't understand how people use that app. It is just so much like hateful, nonsensical garbage over there. Oh my God. She should be listening to what TikTok says about her. And then I go to comment on her TikToks and it's all just like, blue back. Oh, oh, oh. it's crazy. Like apparently I'm in a really special part of TikTok where people are having reasonable, like measurements critique of her and it's a shame that I don't think she's seeing this I think she's seeing a blue bag up on TikTok and she's seeing crazy Twitter hate and there's no one reasonable showing her what things look like oh my god and that's not me excusing like her abhorrent failures to have decent policy at this point it's just like wow the internet landscape is so much worse than I thought <laughs> TikTok is a beautiful place. Y'all make me, um, Twitter's so bad, it makes me appreciate Reddit. Now, let's take a quick look at what really happened at this rally. Now, a handful of pro-Palestinian protesters interrupted Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris during her rally remarks at an airport Wednesday night, prompting her to reprise a familiar line. About halfway through the vice president's remarks, roughly half a dozen protesters began to chant, Kamala, Kamala, you can't hide. We won't vote for G-side. Now, Harris first acknowledged the protesters by borrowing a strategy President Joe Biden used earlier this cycle when pro-Palestinian demonstrators routinely interrupted his events, affirming the protesters' right to voice their opinions while trying to redirect attention to the remarks. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters, she said. But I am speaking now. I'm speaking now. Now, Harris famously told then Vice President Mike Pence, I'm speaking in crosstalk at a vice presidential debate during the 2020 election cycle. As the protests continued, Harris's tone grew more forceful. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking, Harris said, aided by a crowd of several thousand attendees who chanted Kamala in an effort to drown out the protests. Campaign staffers soon escorted the protesters out of the venue. Now, the interruptions the first Harris has encountered at a rally since she replaced Biden atop the Democratic ticket suggested the war in Gaza remains a salient issue among voters in Michigan which has the largest concentration of Arab Americans in the country. Now, leaders of the uncommitted national movement, which supported voting uncommitted on Democratic 
primary ballots. Rather than voting for Biden, briefly spoke with Harris at the Detroit rally. Michigan voters want to support you, but we need a policy that will save lives in Gaza right now. I meet with community members every day in Michigan who are losing tens and hundreds of family members in Gaza right now. We need an arms embargo. Leila Elabd, a co-founder of and committed toward Harris, according to the group. Now, the protesters were not the only interruptions at the event, which was Harris and Governor Tim Wall's third stop as a ticket. Now, throughout the event, some of the thousands in attendance were outside without shed, leading to what appeared to be several heart-related episodes. Both Harris and Wars had to pose their remarks to call for agent medical assistance on behalf of attendees. Now, beyond those moments, Harris and Wars delivered stump speeches similar to the ones they gave earlier in the day in Wisconsin, highlighting what they framed as middle-class backgrounds, referring to themselves as joyful warriors and criticizing Trump and his running mate. Send J.D. Vance for an agenda they suggested would erode personal freedoms. Now, on Monday, I officially became the Democratic nominee for president of the United States. Harris declared before she paused as the crowd erupted in cheers. When chants of lock him up broke out in the crowd, Harris quipped, hold on. Here's the thing. The courts are going to handle that. We are going to beat him in November. Now, Woz laid out some of his top policy positions simply and with a uniquely Midwestern appeal. He outlined his stance on reproductive rights, suggesting the government should not be in the exam room with women and their doctors. He also shared his family's IVF journey, including unsuccessful treatments. The agony of that I can feel to this day, Woz said. Now, on pew-pew violence, he took a similarly direct approach. Our children should be free to go to school without being pew-pewed unalived in their classrooms. Woz also continued to frame Republican opponents as weird, a word other Democrats have adopted. Now, these ideas that they are putting out there, they are weird as hell. No one's asking for it. No one's asking for it. We are asking for a fair shot, Woz said. We are asking for health care and child care. We are asking for an education. We are asking for safety in our streets. Now, the recent controversy surrounding Vice President Kamala Harris's response to pro-Palestinian protesters at a rally has ignited a fervent debate. According to reports, the incident has elicited a range of reactions, highlighting deep concerns about her stance on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Now, at the rally, Harris was confronted by protesters demanding an arms embargo on Israel. Her response, which was perceived by some as dismissive, has been met with criticism from various quarters. Now, one prominent critique comes from a commenter who expressed disappointment over what he interpreted as Harris's lack of empathy and irritation towards the protesters. Just like we have heard, he argues that her reaction reveals a troubling indifference to the plight of Palestinians, particularly given that the rally took place in Michigan, a state with a significant Arab-American population. Now, critics are particularly alarmed by Harris's apparent disregard for the protesters' demands, reflecting broader concerns about the U.S. administration's policies on Israel. Now, many are dismayed by what they see as a failure to address the humanitarian concerns associated with the Israel-Palestinian conflict. Now, this has fueled accusations that Harris, and by extension, the administration, is more interested in political expediency than in taking a principled stand on human rights. The calls for an arms embargo on Israel reflect a growing frustration among some Democrats and American voters who are advocating for more balanced and ethical foreign policy. They argue that supporting such measures is crucial for demonstrating solidarity with Palestinian civilians affected by ongoing conflicts. Now, the lack of substantive response to these demands is viewed as a betrayal of progressive values and a missed opportunity to align U.S. policy with humanitarian principles. The reactions to Harris's response highlight a broader discontent with U.S. foreign policy regarding Israel and Palestine. Critics are calling for greater empathy and concrete actions, such as an arms embargo to address the humanitarian issues at the heart of the conflict. Now, the debate underscores the tensions between political strategy and ethical responsibility in shaping foreign policy. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do you have to say about this? Share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.